Hey, guitar players. I'm sorry. I have to apologize. I clickbaited you a bit because we're not talking about a 560 euro guitar cable. The 560 euro cable is this, which is a mic cable. And you can see it's not even opened yet. So we're going to talk about this in a second. We are talking about a Zeola cable. We are talking about a rather expensive cable. We are talking about this guitar cable, which is three meters, 10 feet. However, that's only 200 euro, maybe $150 because taxes and all that stuff. So it's, it's a rather expensive cable. But yet again, I clickbaited you because I'm talking about the Zeola cable, which is ultra high end, so that I can make you watch a video about Hosa cables, which are, of course, much less. So let me let me say what's happening. Zeola is the high-end brand of Hosa. So in order for you to watch a video about Hosa, which what am I going to say about Hosa cables other than that I love the people and they're good cables, we have to have something to actually talk about. So let's talk about freaking Zeola. Why in the world would you buy a 200 euro guitar cable that's only three meters? And I'm going to ask you, why in the world would you not? video done. Here's my argument. You have super high-end guitars, if you have them. If not, maybe this video is not for you. But if you have spent the 3000 bucks on a guitar, like this one or many other guitars, actually, that one's three and a half, that one's three and a half or three seven, that one's three and a half. So I have high-end guitars. So if you have these high-end guitars, you're going to run them into high-end amps. That thing's four grand, that thing's 3,700, that thing's 3,500, that thing's 2,500, and the amp that we're testing this with, which is this one, is also over three grand. So you're already forking over a lot of cash. And if we stick with guitar and amp only, why in the world would you grab any old cable lying around when you've meticulously picked your boutique guitar and tested it against others and hand-picked the components and waited for two years to get it. And then you're buying this amazing amp that does nothing but freaking clean, but it does it in the most amazing way. And then the conduit between those two lovingly picked and desired elements is any old cable that you've got lying around. That makes no sense. Whether or not this makes a difference to any old cable. At this point, I think is moot. That's a moot point. Does this and this make a difference versus any old guitar and any old amp? You already made the decision that it does. Then why wouldn't you make the decision that this does, which literally is the thing that connects them? Let's talk about induction for a second. A guitar induces with strings vibrating over a magnet with a wire around it, a very, 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 very small current. That current needs to get to your amp in as much fidelity as possible so that it sounds hopefully like what the guitar made, right? That's why you want something with a very good, I'm going to use the word conductive properties, something, so this is silver, and we all know silver is expensive. Not as expensive as gold. I don't know if anyone makes gold cables. I know there are platinum cables. Talk about platinum cables. Why am I even talking about this? Well, back in the day, 15 years ago, 20 years ago almost, I was at Wild West Guitars in Riverside, California, and I played a Borkner amp with some, I think it was an Ibanez, and they had a good $80 monster cable, but then there was a platinum cable. It was thick, it was bulky, it wasn't something you would take live. And I tested those against each other. And my mind was blown because the difference was completely obvious. There was more bottom end, there was more detail, there was more clarity, and there was more dynamics with the platinum cable, which was like 250 bucks. So yes, cables do make a difference. But of course, talking about it is kind of pointless. We want to hear it. 
can you hear the difference is the question. Feeling it is already difficult enough. You have to have good ears. You have to have a good player that plays very dynamically. If you're going high gain with something like the Soldano, where it compresses like crazy and maybe the detail doesn't come out as much, maybe not. That's why we're pretty much staying clean in this video. So let's test it. What are we testing? We're testing this Zayola 10 foot silver cable. And I'm going to go with roughly, let's say 200 euro. It is 149 in the States, but here import and all that is a little bit more. Then I have the Hosa Pro. It's not the Edge. The Hosa Edge is a little bit better. And I think they have Neutrik plugs. I think uh, a little bit more high end, but it's way cheaper. We're talking 35 euro. Okay. This is the Pro. So this is the Pro, which interestingly clocks in when I was doing a search at not a lot more than the just standard Hosa guitar cable. Because uh, I have a little widget that shows me Amazon prices and it, it actually clocked in at, in Germany, kind of almost the same. So this you can get for anywhere between 12 to 20 bucks. This is not an expensive cable, but it's solid. It's got Rian plugs and Rian is kind of the uh, lower level Neutrik brand. So this is metal. Uh, it, it's a nice cable. Of course, we have loads of cameras showing this stuff. So you can see metal casing, Rian, same thing. It is also 10 feet. It, it's a solid cable. And then you've got the standard hoser cable, which again, depending on where you buy it, is actually the same price. So this is like 10 bucks. Um, I can already feel it's lighter. Okay, so you got this right here. And you can see that it's not Rian. This isn't bad. This isn't a bad plug at all. And you've got this sleeve here for some reason. So this is not a bad plug in any way. But you know, it's the standard thing. I would, I would trust for live use a Rian plug more. So realistically, there's no reason to buy this because the Pro is negligibly more just a few bucks. And obviously we're testing the silver one from Zeola against the Pro, against the standard hoser cable, which are totally fine, especially for practice room and live use. We're gonna get into this. We're also get, testing it against any old cable that I pulled out of the drawer. This is a Joyo cable that I got from a trade show. If you look, it looks pretty much like the standard Hosa with the plug. What's in the cable, nobody knows. It's definitely Joyo cable, it's got a Joyo thing. So this is what they use their trade shows and I have, you know, several of these left. Uh, they're in a drawer in another room because I, I don't want to use a very cheap cable. But we're testing that against the others. Now let's look at the Zeola cable. Thick cable, This it's not ultra bendy, but also not super stubborn. And the plugs are actually from Oyade. So let's look at these. This is a nice freaking plug. Yeah. Solid, very nice. I've been using this cable for weeks now. And does it make a difference? Up here, it most certainly does. And if, if it makes a difference up here, it makes a difference here. That's, that's just a fact. And you're gonna say, well, but Henning, What's the point of just having that cable? I'm going into my pedal board. Well, that's what we're talking about, ouchie. That's what we're talking about. If you actually want to do it right, you should have the best chain possible, which means your patch cables need to be higher and your, um, your cable from the pedal board to the amp needs to be higher end. You're going to spend a lot of money if you want to go high end. However, A, does it make a difference? And B, you already spend all the money. If you have a pedal board, that matches that guitar and that amp, you very likely have a pedal board for like six grand. That's easy to spend that much money on a pedal board. So why wouldn't you use good cables? Now, there's of course a huge range when it comes to cables. This is something you get with a China guitar, you know, these kind of things. You know, you can't really fix the cable if you have to, it's all plastic. But I, oh, now I'm seeing actually this is a 
stereo cable. So this is actually for a switch, very likely. I would use that for a switch. A switch doesn't make sound, so it's totally fine. But if you get something, you know what I'm talking about. If you get something like this for guitar, uh, do this with it. And then above the edge and the pro from Hosa, you of course have, you know, levels in between when those and Zeola. So if you want to go more, there's evidence audio. This is about 80 bucks. It's braided. You know, braided cables kind of a nice thing, feel cool. And uh, very good high end noise trick plugs. This is about 80 bucks, totally cool. And then you've got custom made cables. I don't even remember where these come from. I think they're from Poland or Czech Republic. Someone made these for me with, I don't even know what that says. HD plugs, very cool plastic braiding on it. So obviously these are all your options. So we're just going to look at, does it make a difference? Step number one, here's the setup. These silver cable from Zeola, from the guitar into the Tone King Sky King. And obviously in order to have the best possible results, we are miking that with a Lewitt LCT 1040, which again, that's ultra high end. That's a three and a half thousand euro mic, which is going into its uh, remote with the included cable. I can't change that. That comes with the microphone and we hope it's high end. And then we're actually taking a three foot Zeola silver cable, which is clocking in at $200 into my patch bay from where it goes, who knows, through what hopefully high end cable into the audio interface. And again, why wouldn't you use the best possible cable with your mic setup, right? Why wouldn't you use a Zeola cable going from that remote to the preamp? You have a mic for 3,500 bucks. Why are you saving money on the cable? It makes no sense. Does it make a difference? But why, why, why risk that it makes any kind of difference? So let's listen to the Zeola cable, the Pro, the standard Hosa, and the founded at a trade show Joyo cable. <laughs> Thank you. 
and we're back now. I don't know how much of a difference you can discern. After everything, I went back to the silver cable. And my feeling is that there's more detail, definitely more treble, more high end brilliance in the silver versus the lower end cables. A little bit more dynamics, maybe, but I mean, that can be in my brain. I felt that it's more open, lower end is more blooming, and the treble is definitely less muffled. We're talking minute, tiny little details. Something that matters in a mix? Probably not. Something that matters in a live situation? Probably not. Something that matters in how you approach your gear? Let me say this. I take that guitar off the wall, and every time I take that off the wall, I celebrate it. I, I, you know the feeling. You, you grab the guitar, and you're like, ooh, nice. You turn the amp on, you're like, you saved up for this. You're like, nice. You grab your cable, are you saying, nice? Probably not. If you have a Zeola silver cable, you're going to celebrate that just as much because it is part of your setup and you made sure that everything is as good as it can be. Is it necessarily important for the end result? But isn't it fun to say, nice? That's all, that's my whole point. Now let's go and look at patch cables. I have used these for a while. They're very inexpensive. These are Rockboard. You get them from EBS. You get them from Mahali Benton. You get them from any different places. It's all, you know, baked in here in that really flat plug. If this breaks, you shit out of luck. You just throw away the cable. But these are like, you know, under 10 bucks. Okay. So we have three here because for the setup that we're doing now, we needed three of them. Rockboard cables. These are about uh, 20 centimeters, I think. Something like this. I have also used, which is what Dan Steinert uses for his pedal boards, Evidence Audio. I have a bunch of these. These are not inexpensive. Five of them clock in at about 90 bucks, but you can make your own length. Okay. These are pretty annoying when it comes to how not bendy they are. Okay. They kind of stay in whatever position you bend them in, which can be a, a benefit. Um, super small plugs. This is a high-end cable, but you have to make it yourself. It's solderless. It's a little bit, little bit of a bitch to do. But this is a pretty high-end cable. Five of them clocking in at 90 bucks. Zeola silver cable, about a foot. Oyade plugs, which are like literally the most amazingly solid pieces of metal I've ever seen on a cable. This is a good plug. I really like that. And these clock in, well, I'm going to say $80, $90, so probably 100 bucks in Germany. So you really want to count your pedals and make sure that this is what you want. <laughs> so here's the, here's the test. Silver cable into the first pedal. Three interconnect cables, three patch cables. Silver cable into the amp, same setup. So now we should have a cumulative effect because we're adding cables in between and we're adding another 10-foot uh, cable to the amp versus the cheap hoser cable into the pedals with the three rockboard cables and then the Joyo cable to the amp. Let's see if that makes any difference.
-hmm. So did it make a difference? <laughs> did it make big enough of a difference to matter in a mix or life situation? No. But here's the big question. Is any of those pedals buffered? I don't know. And I'm literally too lazy to check. Uh, there's a good chance that the uh, Golden and the Starlight from Universal Audio can be switched between buffered and non-buffered, which I don't remember if they were. It is the tuner buffered? Tuners usually are. So very likely. As soon as you add a buffer, you're changing the impedance and then cable length doesn't matter that much because your signal just arrives in a better condition. So do you, then we're talking about, do you need all silver cables or do you just need one silver cable to go to the buffer and then everything else can be lower quality? That's an option. That's why a buffer is a good idea. And again, it's all up to you. If you heard a difference, if you want to make sure it's the highest end shit, go get it. If not, don't. I, I, I can't wholeheartedly in, endorse spending thousands on cables. However, if you spend thousands on everything else, why the fuck wouldn't you? That being said, I asked them to send me this ridiculous 20-foot mic cable. Why? Well, when I'm recording vocals with my new Lewitt LCT 1040, which is a ridiculous, amazing mic. Why would I want to go through anything less than this from the power supply or remote to my audio interface or to wherever it goes from there? That mic is ridiculous. How much of a dis difference will it make? That's beside the point. I spend the money on the mic. I, I'm sorry, I didn't. Lewitt gave me the mic for my video work and no money was exchanged either way. So it was a trade. But I ha I'm going to say I have a super high-end mic. I want a super high-end cable for that. And I'm so grateful uh, to Dylan and the team from Zeola and Hosa that I now have this. What do you think? Anytime I'm going to need a mic cable, XLR cable, what am I going to grab if I have this? I'm going to grab this. Also, these interconnects, these are about 200 bucks. And you're going to say that's ridiculous. But what is your main thing that you work with sitting on the table? If you're a bass player, you've got a DI box, like a nice Avalon preamp. How are, gonna, how are you going to get that into the audio interface? You spent all this and you've got your freaking Fodera and the Avalon and all that stuff. You're going to not use one of those? You're going to save the 200 bucks? That's, that, that's, my, that's my point. Obviously, I will always say, and I have 50 of these. For Gear Street, I'm running everything on Hosa Edge. Uh, and Hosa Pro, I trust these things blindly. These are kick-ass for the everyday stuff. This is not for the everyday stuff. This is for the, you you want to connect your super shit gear, your wow, oh my God, I can't believe that I grabbed, that I grabbed this and I got my hands on this preamp, um, this microphone, whatever. That's what you want to use for that. For the peace of mind that you did everything to get the right results. How much will it change those results? Well, if you're saying that shit, the cable can't fix it. That's it. I mean, can you hear it in a mix? Doesn't matter to me. I want to grab and say, nice. Because it changes my attitude towards the work that I do. So this is great, and I absolutely recommend getting it. There's, of course, these are super bargains, I gotta say. Standard Hosa microphone cables. Um, these are not even Rian. I don't know what they are, but these are ultra inexpensive. And if you're in the US, you've seen that logo at Guitar Center and everywhere, and you'll probably have a bunch of them. Um, when I lived in the States, I bought Hosa, Hosa, Hosa all day long. And I'm really happy that I'm not friends with them. That That's my pitch. I can't argue you need Zeola cable, but... If you're at Hosa Edge and you're like, oh, you know, I, I, I need to push it further, go to Zeola. They're great people. I really love the team. I love the company. I love the attitude, which is a big plus. And if you want to know that your guitar or your mic or your whatever is in the best hands when it comes to getting that signal to the end, you know what? If you're a guitar player, buy a freaking Zeola guitar cable. Buy the one. 
that you use at home. You just know that you've done everything you can to make sure it arrives in the best way possible. I'll put links below. And as always, we're going to put animals at the end. Mm -hmm.